recently um i decided to uh to what's it called upcycle my uh mild canvases i looked around and i i, I, I I dig through the studio. I had a bunch of uh, old canvas that was going nowhere and doing nothing really. And um, I looked at it and I thought, these are good canvases. Is I don't mean what's on them is good. I mean, it's actually good quality material. They're quite nice ones, little square ones. Sort of about, what are they? About nine, 10 inches by 10 inches, something like that. Like the size, like the shape, but they're really nice for sort of exhibition material. That kind of stuff. So I thought I'll do a se I'll do a series of canvases. I've got four of them. I'll do a series. That's what I'll do. So this is what I did. Now you'll have seen some of these already because I flashed them up in previous videos. But have a look. I can only fit two on the screen at the same time. So um, you'll have to do what you can. So I wanted to do robots because I've got a thing about robots. Um, I've got a thing about all kinds of stuff. You know. Hip-hop animals, skulls, robots. I'm kind of obsessed with these things. So, I had a go at this. So, what I wanted to do, I didn't want to completely cover what had been there before. So, what I've done, I've done letter pieces on, on it before. And letter pieces are all very well and good, but I don't really paint letters, you know. I'm a character person, really. You know, I do the odd letter here and there. But mostly, I do, um, I do characters. So, I thought I'd have a go at some robots. I've done some on paper recently, for those of you who follow me on IG, Insta. You'll have seen them. And they've proved to be very popular as well, actually. My robots and that. So I thought, I'm going to do so. I'm going to paint them. They're not the, the easiest thing to paint, either. I use mixed media for these, as you know. So, um, I did the first one. Did This, this was the first one. And I had this sort of... I did... I started to do a piece across there, which is this orange one, and then kind of thought, what am I doing? I ain't got enough room. So uh, I just went over it and just left that bit in. And actually, I really, I don't know about you, but I really love all that. I love the chaos of it. Do you know what I mean? I love the chaos of where it all goes. I really like that. All the bits and where they, you know, the bit of splash there and a bit of stuff there and a bit of, oh, look, something there and, you know, a glimpse of something there. And I really like that. I'm into that. And that drives some people up the wall, but I really like it. In the same way that I like, you see this bit here? That's all finger smudged. So some of it, it's not a very neat blend or anything. I don't care. I like it like that. It's messy. It's chaos. And... For me, chaos alongside order. Because if you look at my line, my lines are often quite tight. I do very tight line work. And then I've got a bit of mess somewhere. Because that's chaos and order. Order and chaos. For me, that is what this stuff is really about. I really get off on that. I love that. Graffiti for me uh, is, is a forum where I can do that. Like, for instance, I find that in, in Impressionism... It's mostly much more chaotic and a more destruction of form. By the way, feel free to argue this if you if you have any opinions on this. Traditional like impressionism, I find it's much more chaotic, much more broken up. In um, you get you get people who are very very uh, super tight around form. They wouldn't let anything like this go. You know, they're really really tight around form. Hard line shading, hard line. That I love all that as well. But writers like Can too. Uh, dibs, p tunes, you know, really, really good at that stuff. Tight lines, tight technique, everything nice and nailed in. It's fantastic. I like to do both. I like to break it all up and give it a bit of order. So um, on this one, the gun, for instance, this is really interesting. So the gun, I did. Um, uh, I didn't really go. I didn't go dark to light, but I did do a lot of. Um, what did we talk about before? The pedimento, the overpainting, you know. Did a lot of overpainting on this. Did a lot of big fat black and stuff like that and then painted it over. So, I mean, that is technically dark to light as well. But mostly I went light to dark. But I really love the way it came out. 
I really loved it. Really, really liked it. When I was doing it, I was thinking, this isn't working. This is not working. And then afterwards, when I looked at it, I kind of went, no, it works. It's fine. It's good. Actually, it's come out really, really nicely. So I was really, really pleased with that. Really pleased with these two. So of a series of four, I will show you the next two now. Hang on. Now, this is where I took a bit of a departure because typical for me, I can't sort of uh, concentrate too long on one thing. So what I did, I was I was sketching about for my, uh, I've got a book coming out next year, do another book next year. And um, I was doing some rough sketches for it. And I've done these bees characters. And I just thought, I want to put them on a canvas. I really want to put them on. I don't want to have a sort of like a, a transparent, what do you call it, on him, abdomen. Uh, so I've done these ones. And um, I really like the way they look. It hasn't been as popular, this one. I mean, I know I should have just kept it a series of robots, right? <laughs> because now there's three robots and a bunch of bees and a beehive. And that's a bit confusing for some people. I get it. I get it. I mean, it's confusing for me. Listen, I have to live inside this head. Imagine what that's like. So, um, obviously, it's a departure, but still, I still love all this. You see, the, you know, the way that fades into that, and then it's suddenly... So you get... You see, I love all this. You get the chaos here. All the chaos. It begins to fade into order. Then you get order. More order, and then it breaks down again. And then you're back into it. Yeah. And then that covers it. Then, boom, suddenly you've got something much, much brighter, much poppier, coming over the top of it. What is not to love, right? I'm not talking about just my work here. <laughs> this isn't just me getting off of my own work. This is just like, it's like anybody who does this kind of thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm crazy about this sort of stuff. I think I first saw it done by La Club, I think it was. You know, La Club, the crew down in Marseille. I think it was the first time I'd ever seen it done was by them. They'd sort of done, it was like they'd done piece, they'd done a piece and then they'd done another piece over the top. And then they sort of half done another piece over the top. And then somebody had sort of done very dusty throws over the top of that. And it was all, just, the composition of it was just, it was so beautiful and like nothing I'd seen before. I just love it. Just absolutely love it. Robot, there you go. Definitely a nod to a bit of Warhammer 40k there, right? Uh, I love a bit of Warhammer 40k. I don't play, obviously. I mean, that would be far too involved, wouldn't it? So many rules, so many dice. But um, but I love all the kind of folklore around it, all the kind of, you know, the blood angels, emperor's children, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's just so cool. If you love robots and stuff, the Mechanicum, Adeptus, Adeptus Mechanicus, and all the art, you've probably seen the servo skulls that I do. Uh, if you haven't, then uh, go and have a look at my Instagram. I've got servo skulls on there, Warhammer 40k servo skulls that I've designed. Uh, they're the kind of, they're the only realistic, sort of realistic, realistic inverted commas art that I do nowadays, really. Uh, the rest is my sort of cartoony style like this. Um, but, um, but yeah, the definite, definite Warhammer kind of, uh, what's his name? Neil Roberts, who does a lot of that sort of stuff. Uh, very cool. Really cool work. Um, definitely influenced by that. Definitely. Uh, and again, I wanted to show, show like three really kind of distinct robots as well. I didn't want to do them all the same. And this one I found, I'd done this sort of, this kind of containment unit. I've used them before, these sort of containment unit, like radiation units and stuff. And and so to do a bit of, do a bit of overspray there, but leave a bit in the background so you can just see the wires and stuff. Then you bring him right into the foreground. It's all very colourful, very poppy. Chuck a bit of a yellow light in there. I mean, there could have been a bit more going on, actually. I could have done a bit more. I could have done a bit more throwy stuff or something around there. But when I finished this i was very pleased with it actually i thought yeah do you know what i'm gonna let that stand have a bit of disintegration there order chaos again this thing about order chaos you know so it's very very ordered and then it's all disintegrating it's all falling apart it's all chaotic again entropy again you know i'm fascinated by entropy the breaking down of things the the, the working up from chaos into a 
into a state of order, going from a state of order back into a state of chaos, um, which you know is inevitable. And uh, you know, if you if you're interested in that sort of stuff, look up theory of entropy in physics and. Yeah, you know, all these these kind of ideas that, that we filter through our art. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's the series of the four canvases that I uh, that I did recently. And uh, I want to show you one more thing, actually, before I uh, before I chuck in the towel on this one. I want to show you this. It's a bit of a product placement, really, this one. So I've done this um, these prints really beautiful prints these are the nicest prints i've ever done i normally do quite low end prints and by that i just mean the material i use is not super brilliant it's nice it's always, it's always nice it's always nice to have around but this is much more expensive i went for much more expensive material on this one this is egg this is called mohawk eggshell paper it's an art grade heavyweight paper 330 GSM and uh, they're all signed and numbered they're prints basically and this is what I've been doing recently this is what you see me do so I want to show you really because these are what I've been doing in the time lapses putting together a print idea because I really I really love these on prints so I've done them before on prints and they've, <coughs> they've always gone down really really well I've always really liked them something i really enjoyed doing i thought i'm going to do some more i'm going to do another one and uh i'll probably end up doing another one next year uh because i just think there's a format i just think it's a really nice format and uh and i've got some left so i'm going to put the um i will put the link in the description for anybody who's interested in buying one they are really gorgeous things in the background you could probably see that's my alphabet in the background as well, in the grey. I've sort of underlaid it underneath. And uh, I'm really, really pleased with these. I think this is this is one of the nicest prints I've ever done. So uh, so anyway, I just want to show you that as well, guys. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I've been up to recently. That and a load of commission work. I can't really show you the commission work. Uh, can I show you the commission work? You know, I'm quickly going to show you commission work. So, uh, so that's what I've been up to recently, and uh, hopefully, them canvases will get an air out at some point. Uh, maybe do a bit of a gallery thing, or uh, or something like that. I'm really kind of reluctant to put them up for sale because I really like them and I might keep them actually uh, yeah I've got to decide but the robot thing robot design is quite tricky as well you have to design a different one every time it's uh, it's not it's not the easiest thing in the world you know I'm to sort of come up with new new robot designs all the time and uh, I tend to freestyle a lot. And if you turn up the canvas, I mean, that that one, I had an idea because I've done it on paper before. I didn't quite know how I was going to make it work on canvas, but I knew what it was, the shape, basically. This one, I completely freestyled. Uh, it was a complete freestyle onto that canvas. So if it hadn't worked, bear in mind that that's the only background I've got. <laughs> I mean, I could have gone over it. And that's sort of the idea. That's how I've sort of let myself off the hook with these. I kind of thought, listen, if you make a mess of it, just go over it and leave the mess behind. Leave it. Don't worry about it. You see these pink lines in the back there? That's my original sketch lines for this. I thought, don't go over them. Don't try and kill them. Just leave them. I don't care. I, I want to I wanna start doing more of that, really, because that's the idea of order from chaos. That's what it embodies for me. Don't try and get rid of your sketch lines. There may come a point where I don't even rub my sketch lines out on a... On, a, on the ink piece anymore. Just leave them. I might try that as an experiment. <coughs> experiment, you know, <coughs> just just to just to see how I like the aesthetic. Also, it's quite interesting, right? If you're interested in the process, if you like the art, it's kind of interesting, isn't it, to see how an artist puts their lines together. 
I think anyway, you know, but that's because I'm interested in art. Anyway, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, back for more soon.